So today we are in the edit and we're going to be talking about this level, Eternus, and we're going to find out how it was made. First thing I'm going to do, because this thing looks kind of crazy with all the effect lines going everywhere, I'm just going to turn off these lines just so we can see what's going on a bit better. Okay, so this first part, of course, you can tell the signature design. It was made by Grenade of Tacos with gameplay by Ramu, Z Deadlocks, and the one and only Riot. So this section in particular flickers between lots of different colors. We've got red, we've got gray, we've got black, and even a bit of purple. And the cool thing that I really like about this section is that it's a giant maze and actually spans quite a lot of the editor. You're going up and down and all over the place. And look at this. No one's ever going to see this stuff, but it's still like properly decorated. That's insane. Oh, also, look at this dude. Welcome to hell. Scary. Layer 1 looks to be all of our physical objects. Layer 2 looks to be a bit of texturing. Layer 3 looks to be basically all of our red objects. You know, that's a clever idea to classify all the, you know, colored accent objects in one layer. Okay, this is glow. I did not actually know that there was glow in this level. The thing is about the Tartarus trilogy, glow is barely used and that's honestly sort of a relief. So it appears that most of these structures are basically made from getting these default objects here and then just placing them in a certain configuration but specifically spacing them out because spacing them out appears to create a much more dynamic quality than sticking them all in one sort of a place. And also just knows that this clubstick monster has only got one eye. Like it's not like there's another orb here but it's just covered by something. There's, it's literally only got one eye. I wonder what happened to that other eye. Wait a minute, are those faded lines? No way. Wait, what is what is this object? I've never seen this object before. This is crazy. What is this thing? With clever layering and stuff, they've, at, they've managed to put that black one on the top of it and then put that chain there. And then to make the effect of fading lines, because you know, they can't use 2.1 objects, they got a piece of glow. And then that's what made that fading line effect. That is so cool. Over here, what are these, specifically? Ah oh, yeah, they're those little pointy things. What should I call these? I'm gonna call them ninja weapons, because they look like ninja weapons to me. Like ninja knives. Most of the reason why this part looks so good is just the unusual structuring and block placement of basically all of these objects. And the fact that, you know, some of them are like really spaced out like this. And then the other parts are like really clustered and going in all sorts of different directions and really makes stuff interesting. And then in the background we've got these, these sort of hilly objects which almost look like you've got a piece of like math grid paper and then stuck like a red light behind it. And then here, you know, you've got your usual freaky symbols I made out of those objects. Just getting a whole bunch of circle objects around. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Now this part here, I didn't notice it on my first look through, but these things have actually got horns. This part is done by Endeavor, and the gameplay is by Iced Cave. In fact, if we take a look at this, there's actually some text here. What does this say? S-A-O-B. I don't really think that means anything. Might be an inside joke, not sure. But also these blocks here, very interesting. They got one of these 1.6 blocks essentially. And then they covered them with these vines to make them look like something organic. Anyway, back with this demon horn thing. Clearly the effect to make it look burnt on is copy paste another one of these stars and just offset it by a little bit, change the color and then it looks burnt on. And here, how much glow have we got? And there's actually not that much glow. This part in here would be, wouldn't it? It would be, no, it's not got the saturation or anything. It's just, just plain white. I guess I'm too focused on the 2.1 way of doing things where, you know, you, you play around with these values and like the color saturation and stuff, but it looks like that's not the case here. I'm noticing that there's a surprising lack of actual complex blocks and stuff like that. It's, it's the basic blocks, but they just stuck a few extra details in front of them and somehow it looks real good. I actually didn't notice these wheels. They're actually all around the place. I guess they add some sort of a texture, because look, there's some here, some back here. Maybe they're meant to simulate particles? I'm not sure. And this right here, this pocket is also something I need to take a look at. So what's this made of? Oh, this is just made out of all glow objects, but they just they just overlaid them. 
Okay, now here's the club step monster I want to take a look at because there's definitely more than meets the eye with this particular club step monster. I am sure of it. This is actually quite an odd arrangement here. I don't know what thought processes go through people's heads when they go and do odd arrangements of blocks like that. Like, do they think it's going to work the first time, or do they just play around with a whole bunch of odd configurations until the odd configurations work? And there we go, glow under the eyelids. Oh, look at all that atmospheric glow. There's actually a lot there. That's like so subtle. Wait a minute. How have we got dual tone on that spike? What is this? What is this element? Oh, you got a slope. There's a really large slope here. No, that, yeah, that's the actual spike. And then what happened is you got these little things and put them on the outside. So it's a slope inside a slope to make the spike and then they dual toned it on each side. That's how, that's how they made those spikes. Those spikes aren't actually even real spikes. The real spikes are probably invisible, like hidden behind that. Interesting stuff, man. And that's especially a good idea when you, you know, pushing these spikes so close together. Because if you just do that with normal spikes, it doesn't look as good. Oh yeah, the atmospheric glow changes a lot when it turns to purple. Okay, I'm not too interested in what's going on here because I've covered most of these other stuff, but I do really want to know what's going on here with these spikes. Okay, there must be a lot of glow objects. Okay, so it's just a it's just a glow object. So they got a this glow object or something similar, and then just poked it up a little bit. And then over here, I believe it's the same technique as here, apart from they added one of these little twig grass things from specifically this twig object here and they made it the same color and what's going on here we got a whole bunch of atmospheric glow on one side that's my guess am i right no the glow is evenly distributed something's that something else is going on here how is all of this black oh never mind it's just black because that's it that's it oh and look at that we've got a gravestone let's look above we've got anything interesting here no way. Someone did some glow art. That actually looks pretty good, especially from a distance. From a distance, that looks spectacular. Hero Zombies part. Hero Zombies parts are always filled with ridiculous, intimate little details. There's always, you know, the spikes and the spikes. In fact, there's actually a whole lot less spikes and spikes than I would have expected for a Hero Zombie part specifically. Actually, I wonder, did Hero Zombie use glow? Let's find out. There's a little bit on the edges. But yeah, that's it. An unsurprising lack of glow. Actually, let's take a look at how they made the saw. They got one of those ninja knives. Put them around in a circle. What's this? Oh, that's glow. And that's a pulsing object. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, what's this object? No, it's not an object. It's just made out of a whole bunch of spikes. But these spikes are making a form that does not look like a spike at all. That is awesome. And also I just noticed they put these all these transparent spikes around the edges to create some sort of a depth. And I believe this is the Z deadlocks part with the ridiculous wave. This one isn't too complex. Apart from this, this is an interesting design choice here. Having these mini arrow spikes pointing inwards into the pillar. And then the pulses are pretty well done here too. In fact the pulses all the way through this level are excellent. Actually, I'm gonna see if I, I can figure out how this is made. So those are the spikes. And then did you get glow? What is that? Yeah, that's glow. And then you put these vine things in there. And that's your back panel here. And that's your shape. Yeah, so that's how you did that. Actually, it looks a lot more complex than it is. This is Iris. This is the person who's known for basically being in nearly every Top 1 Extreme Demon collaboration ever. Also, love all these little details around that eye there, there's so much in there. Oh, look at that, we've got glow stars, I didn't even see that before. And if you're wondering how they're accentuating those centers so much, it's because those little bits of glow are actually overlapping here. And that's what's creating that, you know, perfectly white beam thing in the center. Okay, that's the edge glow. There's a lot of layers to this part. That's almost like an audio visualizer. This structuring here is excellent. This section here, because what this basically is, is it's a giant pocket, but it's got some stuff that's sticking out on wave angles. And that is so cool to me. 
Also, I'm going to take a deeper look into what's going on here in this little pocket. Yeah, I thought we had those around. And that's adding some texture. I kind of want to figure out what's going on here too, because this is not your average block design. There's stuff going on in this one. Yeah, they're made out of basic blocks. All it is, is it? Oh, here we go. Someone finally found a use for these blocks. So you layered the bricks, and then you stuck those on, and then we got those texture lines, and there's 1.9 blocks. Ah, and here's the part that confused me. And we've got all those individual bricks here. And dark bricks on top of them? Yeah, on top of them. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder how those two merge. And then we got, you know, the glow around those interior areas, the 3D line. So that's how that works. Yeah, I guess these parts here really add a, a bit more depth to the structure. Now, this was one of the parts I was most excited to break down because there is so much going on here and it looks so good. So it looks like there's a whole bunch of circle shaped objects here. Almost like orbs that are being held up by chains. And of course with those chains, there's a big chain. Oh no, these are individual links even. There's like a, a larger chain behind the main chain that we can see in order to dual tone it. And also looks like there's a lot more glow around here than most of the other parts. And then we've even got these metallic lines through here. So let's break it down layer by layer. Okay, layer one, this looks to be all the physical objects. Objects, I've, I've selected 19 objects, but I can't... What's going on here? Oh, so the, this is for optimization. They made some ridiculously large blocks. So that's the black background. Ah, and here are our circles. So this is what made up the majority of the structuring. And then it looks like it's colored on the inside. Okay, this is where all of our saws come in. All of our saws that can't hurt anyone, that is. And also it looks like there's something going on here. Maybe some sort of rotating object? I'm not sure. Okay, here's all of our glow for the saws. So for the saws specifically, we've got big glow, small glow, tiny glow. So those tiny glows must be for the like the highlights and reflections and stuff and then we've got a medium glow. It's just like creating a gradient between all that. Yeah and this one's got a lot. It's got a really big glow, it's got a medium, it's got a smaller glow, like a smaller highlight glow and it's got a highlight for the highlight. Crazy stuff. Look at that. They just go further and further inwards the bigger the saws are. Okay now here's the thing that I was talking about earlier. We've got the saw thing, but then behind it we've got another saw that's slightly large or slightly offset in order to create like a stroke. And this is just individual lines with the same concept. And creating some star patterns, and there's some more stars, and there's some circles. I still don't know what's going on there. Okay, this looks to be what our silver things are. There's those cool looking metallic slopes with the evil hedge in them. There's the glow, there's the backing. Oh, I'm getting something, I'm getting something. No, that's just background. That's more background, that's more background. No, okay. What are those animated things? What is going on here? Okay, it looks like a whole bunch of copy-pasted stuff, a texture maybe? Okay, interior glow, so we've got a whole bunch of corner pieces around here. But what's creating that animated object effect? And there's all the lines to create that glass effect. Here we go, here we go. What is this? I am really excited to find out. How did they make this? How did Iris make this? So that's a glow. Now that's just all glow objects in a circle, right? No, there's more going on, surely. Maybe the animated object is right behind the glow? Come on, show me what it is, please. Okay, that looks to be the background. Looks like a mixture of glow of different purple colors, plus that stroke effect that I mentioned earlier. Oh, come on, what are these animated objects? How are they doing that? Go to layer. Oh! What's this? <gasps> Aha! Here we are. This is what is the cause. 
I would have not have expected that. That is how it's done. That is so cool. So when these go past, of course, it covers over the glow objects. That is awesome. Okay, moving on to the next section of this decoration. This is still Iris, I believe. Iris and gameplay by Circea. And this is mostly the same sort of stuff again. We've got the, the bricks and these funny outlines I showed earlier. And the glow and the bricks, the stars. And this is another Z deadlock section. Now here's one of the interesting things. I don't know why these are here, but here's an 11 in Roman numerals. And then here's a four. Are they like counting to anything? And then here's a seven. They're sort of out of order. I'm not entirely sure what it's counting, but there's something going on in the Eternus law here. Oh, and look at that. I've just found a pocket. Oh, also this game plays by Riot as well. And this swing copter section, which I don't really want to cover because it's basically much like the section before it. But I will say I'm very much a fan of the stuff that's going up here with the orbs. There's some parts where it's like covered and then we've got objects like in front of those orbs to make it look like there's some sort of like, like a shield in front of where that second player is. It's trapped up there. Oh, look at this. It's airbrush. Who made this? Z deadlocks. Z Deadlocks made this. I've got a feeling this uses a, quite a bit of glow. Oh, that's interesting. These are black objects here, and then this is the glow outside of it. So this is meant to create like depth on the structures and stuff like that. And this is an interesting detail line choice, I have to say. It works though. Glow beams, what? Oh yeah, glow beams. It's just a single black glow object there, there and that's the only thing that's actually causing the glow. And there's a very efficient use of glow as well. And then through here, Got more glow beams. What's mostly accentuating highlights around here. Oh, and what's this made out of actually? Is this our first use of faded lines? No. They probably just got glow objects around them that make it look like faded lines. Let me guess. Am I right? I'm right. Look at that. We've got fate we've got glow at the end. I'm just tapering off those lines. What does this say? OMG Acheron Tartarus. What does this say up here? This can be an aqua trigger. I can remove the previous part owner complains. Okay. Okay, this is the other Z deadlocks part. And we've got some textures in with this wave here. I really like how these foreground bushes look in comparison to the actual wave structures. They actually complement each other like really well. And also these glass objects. Yeah, they're glass objects. They make up these parts. So that's interesting. Also, I love how those how those orb eyes just individually glow apart from anything else. In fact, is that an orb? Yeah, that's an orb. How they make the pupil smaller? Aha! Uh -huh. There's a little black ring in there. That's what's doing it. And also, they had little structures in there within the clubstep monster. Aha! Uh -huh. This is Mark's F's part, and you can tell because he's a very specific style, and, and his specific style is everything has to be pokey. Everything has to have spikes coming off it. Everything has to be, you know, like really thorny and look dangerous, essentially. The style's like rather wacky as well. He also does some really cool stuff with spikes. I mean, like, look at this. You got one of, the, you got one of these, one of these hanging pillar things here, and then he stuck a, another one just slightly behind it. To create that gradient effect and then we've got a similar thing going on with these spikes here too it's just gradient upon gradient upon gradient right here and then on the interior of these structures i believe there are spiky hedges with this star object here there's actually it's actually just a spike with another spike there and then you know much like we've got you know spikes inside spikes inside inside spikes making gradients in here we've got you know structures upon structures and structures and also this is one of the wackiest demon club step monsters I've ever seen. I mean like look at those look at those horns, they're crazy. And then there's also the the fact that Mark Seth got some actual hedge objects in the front there to, to cover up some of those details to make it look, you know, extra prickly like he likes to do. And then we've got another one here. Now these are rather unusual structures. And then there's this thing, which you know despite looking like a bit like Lucid Dream. 
I'm actually not a fan of this. I don't know, it just seems sort of off to me. Alright, here we go. This is the part that in the in my video where I, I could turn his parts rank best to worst. This was like thirst for me. Like there's so much going on here and we're gonna break it down properly. I've got a feeling most of it is just due to the designs in here that just make it so good. This part literally turns Eternus into Party Street. Oh wow, already on the first layer there's a lot going on. Actually, I'm going to take a specific look at what's going on here. Is it two objects used in a very specific and interesting and efficient way, or is it a whole bunch of objects? Let's find out. Okay, so that's our outer. That's our outer line. That's our inner line. And then we have... I'm pretty sure that's a 2.1 object. Yeah, they're just two 2.1 objects. No, I mean two 2.0 objects just on top of each other. So that's how that's done. And are these faded lines? Nope, it's using glow. I always thought that people used faded, fading lines, but no, I think people were using glow instead. Maybe that's what they're doing in all their levels. This is a really cool design here. It looks very futuristic. Yeah, there's a lot, lots of lines and curve-based stuff going on here. And I think with this part, it's mostly... I think the thing that mostly gives this its appeal is what I said before, it's the, it's the designs that are done with the lines and the curves. It's, that's what mostly makes this part as amazing as it is. I mean, it does feel out of place with like the rest of the health theme parts, but I can sort of accept its, its existence because it just looks so good. Look what they did with those breakable blocks, it's so good. Okay. Holy moly, there's still a lot more to go on here. There's a lot. Because I was just looking at layer 0. And that is already quite a lot going on in layer 0. I obviously didn't check the other layers because holy moly, there's a lot. One, The one criticism I have on this part is that there's so much going on here that it basically turns a lot of the structures invisible. Like, what is going on here? How are you meant to sight read this? But if you go like layer 0, you can... No, it's still very hard to sight read. But this club stick monster here, I specifically really want to see what's going on here, because it's a lot. Especially how they managed to make that shape, how they do it. Oh right, these are just... No, there are no tricks of big objects here, these are all just really really tiny objects. Yeah, that's basically what this is. Just really really tiny objects to make up this very detailed image of this club stick monster's head exploding. Wow. Let's see how many objects it has. It's gonna be a lot, isn't it? 268. Yeah, that, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, that's just a cube and a glow object. Yeah, as I said before, a lot of this is sort of self-explanatory. It's just everything is filled up with ridiculous designs just everywhere. And like every possible square inch of this editor space is just filled up with designs. I'm only gonna take a look at the ones that I, I'm genuinely question how they did them. Actually, this here. How's this done? Glow. Yeah, of course this was done with all individual pieces. Of course it was. Okay, that's cool. Look at that animation that they did down the bottom there. And once again, it was made out of lots of individual little pieces. There are no tricks. No tricks, just a ridiculous amount of objects. I wonder how many objects this individual thing is made out of. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that is far too many for one one triangle. This gotta be the most object heavy part of the entire level. This would take up like one fifth of the entire object count. In fact, let's select this. How many objects does this part have in total? Twenty K objects. A lot of just Extreme demons are 20k objects. This part is 20k objects alone. Wow, there's a lot going on there. Now it's time to move on to Monster Family. This part is by Pluff. From what I heard, Pluff was the main person who was going in and helping with like fixing parts that needed upgrading and bug fixing and all sorts of merging stuff so he was a he's a very important figure in the creating of this level so be inter it's interesting to see what his individual style is here it looks mostly like z deadlocks apart from 
a little bit more complex. There's not really too much for us to see going on here. Mostly the main thing is that we've got these unusual looking structures, plus the fact that we've got outlines, structures not in front or offset, but literally in the structures, but they've got these lines like inside them essentially, which helps like distinguish stuff. Like we've got this, these three objects here, and then this one is built into this larger structure in order to create some distinction within this part. Oh, ho, ho, I think I know what's going on here. This is this plus glow object. That's what that is. I'll prove it to you. Glow? Yep, that's exactly what it is. Also, I have to admit, the pulses and outlining, the outlining specifically on this club step monster is really well done, despite it looking like pretty basic. Where the outlines are placed and how the pulses work on it actually actually makes it surprisingly effective like it's like it's invisible it's like beaming at you from the darkness and then it appears and then it turns a bit darker and then fades flashes into existence again and then maybe repeats the cycle and there's a similar thing going on with this saw here as well and also i like how we've got little splashes of gray in amongst this these red structures and we're going black and white this is the final wave gameplay by ice cave decoration by pluff this is mostly a pluff part again. Eternus, which I'm not going to get too much into detail with. And Burger D. Hertz 17 part. There's a bit I can say about this. What I really like about this part is just how well blended these metallic looking objects are with basically everything else that's selected. Like, that's the default slope with no hitbox there. And then that's meshing in with all these other parts as well. Basic blocks are chosen specifically for the structures on this part to try and make it look as, you know, metallic and devious as possible. Also love the pulsing going through here. It's like, you know, creating that intensity that this level is meant to do. And then we've got little bits of purple in there as well, which works so well. It's almost like a flickering, like a sheen. And then at last we have the end. And this end works so well. Those, you know, the beaming eyes, the symbol, the GG. In fact, I'm going to break this specific club step monster down. Yeah, so it looks like mostly a mix of this and this is what's making up those those club step monsters. There's barely any layers have been used on these. I only used like nine layers. Wow. Oh, I think I know what this is. These, I, I, I believe these are set at a lower opacity, so it basically controls the lighting of the entire club step monster, almost like a backlight. Uh, that's why I believe this black shading here is, is still this, and this actually goes on the top. Yes, yeah, definitely a backlight, because that's going behind everything. So I've got this backlight under everything, and yeah. That's my full breakdown of Eternus. And I just noticed this guy here. GG.